Jared here with CarBuzz.com, and behind me sits the 2019 AMG GT C Roadster. That is a mouthful of a car name, but this is a mouthful of car. So now, AMG is the department of, of Mercedes that is known for taking their base models, the C-Class, E-Class, all the way up to the GLS three-row SUV even, and sticking big, enormous engines, better transmissions, uh, all that stuff, and making them fast and loud. But when the bosses came to the AMG department and said, we want a sports car that will compete with the Porsche 911, starting with a base Mercedes product, product just wasn't going to do it, which is why they built this car from the ground up. Now this is available as a coupe or a convertible. There's also a four door model, which is not really based on the same platform as this car, but it is called the GT four door. We have the C here. So I'm going to open up the hood and we're going to talk about the engine because much like the Porsche 911, there are a lot of different trim levels here that you can choose from and it makes a very big difference in terms of power. But before we do that, be sure to click that link in the description below for the best deals on the AMG GT. Yep, $180,000 car. But yes, there are deals to be had over at carbuzz.com. Now let's go ahead and pop that hood. So the reason why I brought you under the hood is because I want to just take a look at this marvel of an engine here. It is a 4 liter bi-turbo handcrafted V8 engine, dry sump lubricated. So Mercedes uh, ascribes to this one man, one engine policy. You get a little plaque showing you the person who built your specific engine. And I have gone on record saying I think this is the best engine on sale. It is called the M156. And the reason why it's the best engine on sale is because it shows that all these people are whining about turbocharging doesn't sound good. Normally aspirated was better. Well, they haven't heard one of these because this thing sounds just as good, if not better than the old 6.2 liter V8. Now, it comes in a bunch of different engine outputs depending on which AMG GT you get. Just like the 911, there's a million to choose from. So on the coupe side, there's the base GT, the GTS, GTC, and then GTR, and then a GTR Pro. Horsepowers range very differently uh, across the lineup there. And then on the GTC, you can only get a base or a C. Next year for 2020, you'll be able to get an R Roadster, but they're only going to make 750 of those for the whole world. This particular one that we have produces 550 horsepower. Zero to 60 is gonna take just 3.7 seconds. All that power goes out to the rear wheels through a seven speed dual clutch manual. And what's really special about this engine in this particular car is that look at where it ends. All of this, this is just cooling and extra stuff to external accessories. The engine stops right here. That's behind the axle line. Technically, this is a mid-engine car. So to heck with that new Corvette, this was mid-engine first. The turbos, they're right there. You can see them, they're not hidden. They're not off to the side here. This is a hot V configuration. That means the turbos are housed in between the V. That means almost zero turbo lag. There's a little bit in comfort mode, but when you put it in race mode, this car is incredibly responsive. So now that I've shown you the engine, let's go ahead and see how it performs out on the road. So before we start driving, I wanna talk about the drive mode controls, which are all housed here on the center console. This is really important before we get going because there's a lot of customizability here. This is just your basic volume knob. We'll talk about that later. This is the most important dial here. So you spin this dial around and it will light up with the different drive modes. We've got C for comfort, although that's laughable. They should have just called it normal because this car doesn't really do comfort very well. You've got sport, you've got sport plus, and then you've got race mode, which is the most aggressive settings. Uh, so this will change uh, the traction control, suspension, exhaust, uh, gearbox personality, engine personality. You also have this I mode where you can kind of customize um, and pick which of each of those settings you want uh, to make your best driving mode. But you can also control it with these other buttons here. So you've got your engine stop start, you've got your traction control, which can be turned on and off. You've got your suspension, which has three modes. So you have your base uh, comfort mode, and then there's two uh, stiffer settings. I like to leave it in its most comfortable setting. 
this will put the transmission into manual mode. You've got your start stop defeat, which the start stop in this car actually works decently well uh, for a sports car like this. Although I find stop start in any of these ridiculous sports cars to be just a little bit silly. And then you've got your loud exhaust mode. So if you want to drive uh, around in the comfort mode with everything else set to comfort, but you want the exhaust to be loud, you can just trigger that right here because we do have the C, which comes with the uh, two mode exhaust. And then this is the uh, shifter here. Now my one complaint with it is that it's really far back, so it's not that easy to reach. You kind of have to reach your arm back, which is difficult with these seats. But once you're there, you, you, you don't have to use it that much because this is essentially an automatic car. You push P for park, you go up one detent for reverse, you kind of go down one for neutral, or if you pull a little bit further, that will put you in drive. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see how these settings all work out on the road. All right, so let's get it out on the road. I am in my favorite drive mode. We've already talked about how configurable this car is. So my favorite mode is race mode with the suspension set to its most comfortable setting, which is not that comfortable as we'll find out. Uh, we've got a seven speed dual clutch automated manual in this car, which is awesome when you're doing some spirited driving like I'm doing now on a back road. Oh my God. Those pops and crackles of this exhaust. Listen. We let off. We're gonna downshift. Oh my gosh. It sounds like they just took Thor's hammer and stuck it in the exhaust where it just now produces thunder. Oh my gosh. This car can wake the dead. It's crazy. The looks won't do it. The exhaust can definitely do it there. And as I mentioned, this is a front-engined car, but the engine is so far back that it's technically a front mid-engine car. So through the corners back there, it, it, it's just incredible. It's so good. The steering is very nicely weighted. It might not have the most feedback of all cars on sale today, but it is darty enough. I adore what AMG is doing with the steering these days. Um, building steering that is just very easy to use every day, but also great on a track, great on a back road. And this car, as we have it uh, sitting, is about 3,600 pounds, uh, not the lightest. You can get the coupe, uh, which is obviously a little bit lighter than this, but, and I think I would probably get the coupe because the whole point of a convertible is that you can kind of cruise with it um, and you can be comfortable on the road and <laughs> This is not a comfortable car. I mentioned that I have the suspension in its softest mode, and yet when we go over a bump, I still feel every little bit of it uh, through, <laughs> through the seat here. Now, the brakes are really good, even though they are not the optional carbon ceramics. Those are really expensive, about a $9,000 option. Oh, it's, just, it's so fast. So the transmission, very quick, lightning down shifts. So shift shift but it doesn't work that well in traffic i think it is a little juddery in traffic so there are some dual clutches on the market that will do it a little bit better than this i will say now launch control in this car is incredibly easy not too much to figure out here i have it in race mode which means traction off um, it's in its most aggressive settings now it's really easy to do a launch in this car all you've got to do is put your foot on the brake, foot on the gas, let off your uh, foot on the brake, and you'll just go. So zero to 60 in this particular car, the convertible GTC is 3.7 seconds. Now that's the same as a GTS coupe, but this is a little heavier, so that's why. A GTC coupe will do it about a tenth quicker, really not that bad. If you wanna get the convertible, you're not sacrificing much. The fastest you can get is the GTR, that's 3.5 seconds, and the base car is 3.9. Let's do a launch now. Release. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how well this thing hooks up, even with rear-wheel drive only, with no traction control on, mind you, because I'm in the sportiest mode, the race mode, and there was no wheel slippage. The computer just handled that absolutely perfectly. I didn't even hear as much as a tire chirp, uh, so yeah, that was really good launch. I think maybe one of the things helping this car out so much is those massive 305 section rear tires. They are really grippy. They are really good. And remember, this car has a wider rear end than a base GT coupe. 
the same rear end that you'll get on the R. So yeah, this thing is just absolutely great. This one man, one engine philosophy that Mercedes has. I, I've told you how much I just adore this engine. You do get a lot of other stuff uh, that makes this GTC a little bit better than a GT or a GTS. Now, when you're first looking at this, you might be saying, oh, well, all I'm getting is a little bit more power from the same engine, and that is most certainly not the case. So with this car, you're also getting rear wheel steering, and can you feel it through the corners? Yes, you absolutely can. The rear wheel steering is great. You're getting an electronic limited slip differential. You're getting the adaptive dampers, which I'm not so sure about the adaptive dampers because it really only goes from punishing to break your spine harsh. Uh, so I'm not sure what a base GT feels like with its normal brakes. Uh, but yeah, this adaptive suspension, not good for being comfortable. You do get that wider rear end that I mentioned. You get bigger brakes in the front. You also get Napa leather seats, which, which feel great. You get this race mode. You only get Sport Plus mode on the base and S models. Uh, you also get that performance exhaust, which I don't think I have to tell you how oh, incredible that sounds. So yeah, you do get a lot with this C package. They wanted to take the R, which is a very, very track-oriented car, and just make it a little bit more road-friendly here, but I just don't know if it's road-friendly enough. I've driven a lot of other AMG products with this engine. The E63 was just a little bit too stiff. The S63 is like a cloud, and for about the same money as this, if you're never going to take it to a racetrack, I think the S63 is going to give you better value. You get massage seats, you get air fragrance, you get all of the bells and whistles that you don't really get in this car. This is a pure track-focused, stiff sports car, so you really have to be ready for that when you buy one of these. Although, crucially, the steering, the dynamics, the way that this car feels through the corners is unlike most other AMG products, which is why this is just their flagship in terms of performance. Um, now, gas mileage, not great. Um, I've been averaging about 12 MPG, which is below the estimates even. Uh, they say 15 in the city, 21 on the highway, 17 combined. Now this engine, if I go ahead and put it back into comfort mode, it does shut up. It gets really quiet. You can barely hear it. It's smooth. As long as you're not on terrible pavement, and trust me, we've been driving this car around all week, and I have cobblestones out front of where I live right now, and over the cobblestones, I have just been bouncing around like a lunatic. If you had like a cup of water, it would bounce all over this car unbelievably stiff. This might be the stiffest car I've ever tested. This car is a bit like a dominatrix. It just really wants to punish you. Um, so yeah, don't buy this if you're looking to drive it every day. Now, we're going to focus on the interior because the GTC does have a little bit nicer leather and all Katerra materials that you don't get in the base car. But since Mercedes sent us a 2019 model instead of a 2020, we don't have all of the best tech toys. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the differences between the two model years. We're going to go ahead and pull over and do that now. So now we're going to take a look at this simply gorgeous interior. I think AMG has just nailed uh, the interior on this car. Premium materials everywhere. We've got this yellow stitching that matches the exterior. Tons of carbon fiber. Because we have a C, we have a little bit nicer leather and Alcantara materials than we would otherwise get on a base car. Though I will note that the interior of the 2020 model year is going to be a lot nicer than this, and I will explain why, starting with the gauge cluster here. So as you can tell, we've got basic analog gauges here with a nice like yellow uh, tack finish, which is pretty cool, especially on this yellow car. But this is all gone for 2020. Mercedes only had a 2019 model for me to test. I'll be interested to try and get in a 2020 model year next year to see all of those improvements that I mentioned. So we do have a helper screen in the middle that can be controlled via the buttons on the steering wheel. I have it showing basic trip information now, but if I push this home button, I can have it showing uh, navigation, radio, media, or if I go all the way down to AMG, that's where all the fun things live. You can have a boost gauge, uh, oil temperature, you can have a G meter, you can have it showing uh, 
I showed you the different drive modes. This will show you what mode the engine, suspension, gearbox, all of those sort of things are in. You even have a lap timer. So those things are all pretty fun to play with. So even though the 2020 is going to be all digital, this is not bad by any stretch. The steering wheel itself is this nice flat bottom wheel with these big, nice uh, paddles. They're sort of like a gloss black that feel really good. You've got your simplistic buttons here. This is going to be a different steering wheel as well for 2020. More more in line with what you'll find on the brand new AMG products, so it has like a silver finish. I do think the, the new steering wheel looks a little bit better, but this one is not bad at all. Now we're going to talk about the center stack, which is going to be a lot different on the 2020 model. So the center console here looks gorgeous. I love how it has all of these different vents. They're very easily adjustable. They feel really premium. All of the knobs and things uh, have this sort of metallic finish. Not quite as metallic as they feel on the S-Class though, if I am being honest. Um, now this is the old Mercedes command system, which means that it is controlled via this little touchpad here with a rotating knob. So if I push this, I can get to uh, my vehicle settings here. Um, so I can go to vehicle settings, dynamic select. Um, I've found that over the years, this system is not as handy as it used to be. Now for 2020, this is going to be a larger, wider display, and this is going to be replaced with the new uh, touchpad. If you go ahead and watch my 2020 Mercedes GLE 450 video, you'll see what that system's like. It is not the full Mercedes-Benz user experience like in that car, but it will have the same uh, controller, which I think is a lot easier to use. These climate controls we've seen are pretty familiar. Uh, down here we have our heated seat controls. No ventilated seats, interestingly enough. I believe that you can get ventilated seats on this car, but this particular one that we're driving does not have it. Uh, you've got your air scarf, which is a convertible only feature that blows hot air on your neck. So even if you're uh, driving in a cold weather climate, that'll keep you warm and toasty. And then this is for our active spoiler. We can push that. That'll pop the spoiler. And we also have a chin spoiler in the front that lowers. That looks really cool in operation. And I love being able to control it here. And even though this is a small two-seater sports car, if I slide this carbon fiber uh, deck lid over, we've got two very usable cup holders. Now, the usable space in here is pretty good. We've got these little um, pouches here, these leather pouches on the doors. The seats are very aggressive, but I think on a sports car like this, it makes sense. Now, let's go ahead and check out the trunk where things are not quite as spacious. Back here, I think the AMG GT looks brilliant. Because we have the C model, it is wider than a standard GT. It's about as wide as the GTR. It's got booty for days, whether you get a coupe or a convertible, I think it looks fantastic. The convertible looks good too, but I think there's no wrong way to do this car. But if I pop the trunk, Trunk's really small, only 5.8 cubic feet of storage back here. If you do get the coupe, it's more of like a hatchback that leads into the cabin. 10.1 cubic feet of space, so that is something to consider. The coupe is a lot more practical than this. Now, one thing that is kind of cool on this car, you've got this pop-up spoiler back here, whether you get the coupe or the convertible. Um, but if I lock it, you can actually put this top up and down using the key fob, which is pretty cool. So if you're at the country club and you see it's about to start raining, you'll be able to put the top up without having to worry about getting your nice interior all wet. So now that I've shown you the trunk, let's go ahead and price out our yellow beast. All right, so if you want an AMG GT Roadster, the base price is going to be $124,700 for the base GT. That's going to get you the 469 horsepower version of this engine, 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds. Now, the C model, which is a big upgrade, brings the power up to 300. 550 horsepower, 3.7 seconds, and 196 mile an hour top speed. That one's going to start at 158,850, but the one that we have is a lot more expensive than that. We have the active distance assist that's basically adaptive cruise control for 2250. We've got the 20 inch AMG wheels. I think they look great for $1,700. We have uh, AMG and the interior and exterior night packages, $800 and $750. 
heated front seats are $950, seriously, on this expensive of a car. Can't believe those are optional. And we have the Burmester Audio, which sounds fantastic, for $4,500. As tested, $179,515. That is a whole lot of money, but you are getting an incredible sports car here. Now, I will say that this 2019 model is not the one I would get. I would wait for the 2020 model because the changes include uh, digital gauges, a larger infotainment screen, a new infotainment controller, different steering wheel with a drive mode controller on it. You get a new center console with little uh, touch capacitive screens. You get a data logger and you get minor exterior changes. I think those are all going to be worth the weight on this one. Now let's go ahead and sum up our time with the AMG GT Roadster. Now that we've priced out our AMG GT, our big yellow friend over here, let's go ahead and sum up my time with it. So this is one of the best handling front engine cars I've ever driven. It does feel way more special to me out on the road than something like a Corvette. I think it's way sportier than something like an LC500 or an Aston Martin DB11, but that harshness may not be something that everybody is looking for. If you want a car that you can use every day with some good usability, the coupe version of this is kind of usable, but that stiffness just ruins it for me. So I'm gonna take some points off for how stiff the car is, and because this 2019 model doesn't have the best interior technology, it just feels too out of date to me. The AMG GTC Roadster is going to earn a score of great buy. I'm really looking forward to driving the four-door model, which I think can encompass a lot of the craziness of this, but in a more comfortable package. And I want to try a 2020 model year with the better technology in the dashboard. So that is my rating of the 2019 AMG GTC Roadster. Hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to the Car Buzz YouTube channel, hit the notification bell to be alerted of all of our latest videos. And if you'd like to keep up with all of the latest and greatest in automotive news, be sure to download the Car Buzz app on iOS and Android. That's where all of our latest content always lives. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you next time.